everybody, Nefertiti here. I've got some beautiful primed horns ready for bonking and headbutting galore. But you know what? They look a little plain. Let's spice them up a little bit and apply one of these beautiful kind of gradients to them. This can be done super easy without using an airbrush. It's nearly permanent, waterproof, and it lasts for beautiful, fantastic colors. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, before we can actually begin the project, I do wanna go over the material list. I have thoroughly tested this and I found that it works perfectly fine with felt, fleece, and minky. As for other materials, eh, not so sure. Feel free to experiment at your own leisure and maybe I'll update this with a future tutorial if it works with other materials. You're also going to need spray paint. Now, I personally do recommend the Krylon brand, especially the Krylon All-in-One, as those work fantastically well as a paint and primer and I've never experienced any kind of clogging or dripping with these ones than I do compared to the cheaper ones. You'll also need, and absolutely need, a heat tool. These can be picked up relatively cheap for around $15, at least on average, from your local hardware store. It absolutely must be a heat tool. It cannot be a hair dryer. A hair dryer will not work with this method. Trust me, I tried. It doesn't work. Once you have your basic materials, all you simply have to do is construct whatever it is you're going to apply your gradient to and make sure that it's ready to go. Especially if it's a round or three-dimensional object. I find doing this to flat patterns tends to be a little bit confusing sometimes. But with all that in mind, we are ready, set, and ready to proceed, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now before we actually actually begin, I do want to also mention some safety gear. Make sure you're wearing a mask and that you have a glove on your spraying hand. You don't want to get this spray paint on your skin. To apply your gradient, simply hold the object and give quick short bursts with the spray paint from a distance. The idea here is to spray in even tones, very quick short bursts, very gently just applying the paint to the material. This helps achieve this beautiful blended gradient. And at the plus side of not having to spend $400 on an airbrush, it works phenomenally well. You can see here, just applying that soft baby blue to the tips, just barely noticeable, but it's a nice color touch. These are Winza's horns, so they have a beautiful blue ombre gradient. I'm applying the secondary color now with this beautiful nice teal. You can see now the color shift is a lot stronger. I continue on forward using the more medium blue kind of gradient here, and then we're ready to go and use our heat tool. Now, once you have your object, it's still got that wet spray paint. You're going to take your heat tool and set it to the low setting. Let it warm up for a little bit, and then wiggling and jiggling and moving it side to side in a circular motion, you're just going to use it and go all along the edges that you've spray painted. Always make sure that the tool keeps moving. Don't stop in one place for more than half a second or so, otherwise you'll notice that the material will end up burning and crumbling up. The whole reason I use the heat tool like this is because it effectively melts the paint into the fibers and seals them. This makes the color nearly waterproof, permanent, doesn't fade, is still soft and squishy if done right, and you achieve this beautiful airbrushed gradient so we're gonna take it outside and I'm gonna finish off the edge of my gradient with my darkest colors. I find it's always easier to start from the lightest color and work your way into the darkest. It's a lot easier to go light to dark than it is to do the reverse. Once again, quick short bursts of the spray paint and just barely coat the area. You wanna get as much of the dust on the blended areas as well, just so that you get this nice smooth transition between each color. It definitely takes some practice. My first few runs didn't quite end well, but once you get the hang of it, it's fantastic. My spray paint can is almost out here for this color, so I'm having to shake it off camera so that it gets more of a charge onto it. <laughs> Probably better to do this with full cans. When you're going from a very light color like this white that I used for the base horn and trying to adjust it to a very deep dark color, I find it does take quite a significant amount of paint in order to make an actual impact on the material. 
I also went ahead and touched up the transition areas a little bit more with the other colors just so that they blended and made them much more vibrant. You can always add a little bit more, just be very careful not to add too too much otherwise you'll end up having very hard solid horns. I want these to be soft and fluffy. And once again go ahead and seal these areas. Sometimes you'll notice that the paint will sort of boil as you do this. Don't worry, it's perfectly fine. As long as the material doesn't start to crunch up and you can see the backing, you're perfectly fine and it should survive. Should. Now, one of the things that happened here is you can see that as I sealed the paint, the fibers separated a little bit and it exposed the white base color. You can simply take it outside, give it another spray of color and make everything much more vibrant to patch these areas. See how pretty that looks? And look, because it's been sealed properly, you can touch it and no paint will rub off on your hands. There's also no sticky residue, so it won't stick to you, it won't stick to other people, and it won't stick to other fursuits. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Now we have beautiful, fantastic horn gradients that are ready for application on whatever you're looking for. This technique can also be applied to lots of other things and usually results in them remaining soft and squishy. Don't be afraid to go out and experiment. There's lots of different applications that you can use this on. Here's some samples of work that I've actually used it on so you can get a good idea of how versatile this can be. These are just a few examples of the many different ways that this could be put to use. There are so many different applications that you can physically use this on. If you like plushies, Add some gradients to your plushies. You can also use it to add accent details to fursuits, cosplays, weapons, props, even just decorative stuff that you feel like adding a little bit of extra spice into. Please feel free to shoot me an email. I'd absolutely love to see what you can create using this. I hope you found this helpful, and if you'd like to see more from me, please feel free to subscribe or leave a like on this video. It's always nice to see the kind of feedback that you guys are willing to give. If you'd like to see more work in progress and other things like that from me, feel free to follow me on my social medias. I've always got something interesting to say or something interesting to sneak peek and share. Who knows what you might catch a glimpse of next. Thank you so, so very much for watching. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and a fantastic life.